ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey tea sippers, happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's doing good today. So I wanted to come on here and just spill some tea, honey. If you guys do not know, the other day I spoke about Doja Cat winning her first Grammy Award, which is very much deserved. You know, she's been in the game for a while. She has a lot of hits, a lot of collaborations, things like that. I'm with SZA. And child, out the woodwork from the backwoods of South Africa, child. Her daddy done came out the woodwork to not only congratulate her, but to also thank the fans for supporting his daughter. When I tell you South African Twitter lit his ass up and then American Twitter jumped into it and lit his ass up some more, it was a mess. They were roasting her deadbeat daddy, okay? For y'all who do not know, her dad is a South African actor, very famous in South Africa. His name is his name is Dumisani Dalamini. And he was in the movie back in the day, Serafina. This was a movie like back from the 90s um, about South Africa. And I just remember Serafina just had a beautiful voice. They were always singing and dancing. It had to do with apartheid. So anyways, he was one of the stars of the movie. He somehow hooked up and met Doja Cat's mother. And she's a white Jewish woman. And she, Doja Cat's mom got pregnant and he basically did, even though he's famous. Now, what's so ironic about this entire situation is that technically Doja Cat ain't never even met her daddy. Because I remember a few years ago, she ran into Whoopi Goldberg backstage and Whoopi was saying, you know, I'm a fan of yours. Da, da, da. And um, Doja Cat says, you know, my dad. And Whoopi's like, who your daddy? She says Dumasani. He played Crocodile and Serafina. And Whoopi is shocked because Whoopi was also on Serafina. So Whoopi is shocked like, oh, my God, that's your dad. And, you know, she's reminiscing. And Doja Cat goes, it's crazy because you've met my dad and I've never met my dad. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Okay. How are you doing? Great. I'm just thinking about my dad because he was in Serafina and... Yeah, so seeing you and meeting you is like the craziest What's thing. What's your dad's name? What's your dad's name? Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's Crocodile. Yeah. Oh, shit. Isn't that no. amazing? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And I didn't get to meet him, but you did. Man. Damn it. But that's so A good man. So cool. Really a good man. Yeah. Now, that was back... April 2020 when she said this that she had never met her father and so I find it very so I find it very interesting that two years later Doja Cat ends up winning a Grammy award and all of a sudden Big Daddy Dumasami you know he comes you know creeping around the corner and shit you know sending congratulations to his daughter so you can congratulate her now at her glory, but you couldn't congratulate her when she was born at the hospital. You couldn't tell the mother congratulations for birthing my child and going through, you know, nine months of pain and, you know, however many hours of labor. But now he's coming with the congratulatory celebration. So let me go ahead and show you all what he said on social media. He took to Instagram and he wrote this. Just wanted to thank everyone who supported my child, Zendali. God bless you all. Doja Cat's real name is Zendali. Her whole name is South African. Okay. So he called her by her South African name. He thanked his fans for supporting her. And so the South Africans were like, uh, sir, it's sad that we, the fans had to support your child because you chose not to. When I tell you, they lit his ass up, honey. Lit his ass up from South African Twitter, South African Instagram to American Twitter to American Instagram and back. Okay. So let me go ahead and show y'all these comments, these tweets. Y'all go ahead and check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary.
All right, you guys just saw those comments. You guys just, you know, saw what folks had to say. They literally had to remind him. They were posting old videos and basically reminding him, like, the only thing you've done for Doja Cat is literally comment on her Instagram and comment on some of her posts. Have you met him yet? By no, the way? never. So just for people who don't know, your dad is actually pretty popular in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the fact you've never met him. Mm -hmm. He's a star where he's from. Mm -hmm. You're a star where you're from. Yeah. Y'all never met. Like, tell me about y'all's relationship because I've never really um, got the gist of it. He, he, I've just, I've never met him and uh, he's on Instagram and he comments on like pictures sometimes, maybe not anymore, but he he did a few times like months ago mm -hmm. um and uh he's an incredible dancer and a great actor um but yeah no i don't i don't know him very well would have you ever, yeah, have y'all tried to connect um i yeah i guess when i was like 13 i like wanted to see him and then i don't know what happened but yeah would you be open to it now though um yeah sure why not you know uh he's you know probably still busy doing doing stuff but yeah sure i'd be down to meet him you have never even gone out your way to meet her and this is not a man who's poor okay he's not living in the slums of south africa south africa is a beautiful country i mean he there's a picture of him he's in front of some type of ferrari or lamborghini i mean he definitely has money so he has enough money to fly to the states and meet his child he definitely has enough money to fly his child out to come see him but never once stepped up, you know, so I think the whole situation is sad, but it just goes to show you that, you know, as a parent, especially a father, you need to be in your child's life because you never know who that child may be in the future. OK, so why he don't turn his back on, you know, the mother of his child and on his child, look who his child grew up to be. You know, she became Doja Cat. She's now a Grammy winner. She's recognized globally. And it's really sad because they could have built a wonderful legacy together. And especially being that, you know, she didn't have that black side of her family. Hence why she has her own tragic mulatto story of her hating her features like her hair and things like that. Because she never got that positive reinforcement from the South African side of her family. She should have been around her South African aunties and grandmothers and, you know, cousins. But she wasn't because of her father's selfishness. So, you know what? I'm glad that the fans chose to drag him and remind him, you know, that while you're congratulating her, you definitely could have done more as a parent. So I just find the whole situation sad, but that's how it is. Whenever one of these, whenever somebody blows up and they become big, all of a sudden the deadbeat parent comes out the woodwork, you know what I'm saying? With praises and congratulations. The same thing happened to Shaquille O'Neal a few years ago when he was popping and for when he first came into the game, he'd been raised by his stepfather. But, but once Shaquille was in the NBA doing his thing, getting championships, here comes the biological father. So much so that remember uh, Shaquille O'Neal had to come up with a song. And say, you know, Phil is my father because my biological didn't bother. You know, he was on the Ricky Lake show, you know, looking for money, looking for a check. It's a whole mess, child. I can't stand when a deadbeat parent comes out the woodwork. So anyways, in other news, we got to talk about this whole T.I. situation. So if you guys do not know, T.I. Tip Harris calls himself now becoming a comedian. About... Two weeks ago, he got into it with, with Godfrey. Um, he claimed that Godfrey was throwing shade at him for being a comedian and all this other shit. If you had something to say, I feel like you would have said that right then. Yeah, I right. wouldn't expect it to be all smiles and shits and giggles. And then when I turn my back and now I see you, the same person I met, took a picture with and all that shit. Yep. And, and, and now it's like, oh, well, he shouldn't have came up. But that's that the rules and da 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 No, no, uh, no, yeah, no, no. I didn't even care to listen to their back and forth or to watch the interview because I just don't care. I don't see T.I. as a comedian. I see him as a rapper trying to be a comedian. They want to dip their toe into so many different things. And, you know, that's fine. You know, that's his right. But people have the right to also decide if you're funny or not. And I've seen a few comments where people have gone to see some of his shows and they said it's not really funny. It's literally him sitting there talking. He's not even really cracking jokes. He's just, you know, talking. So I don't know. But all of a sudden yesterday, this video went viral of T.I. going off on this black female comic. Her name is Lauren. And he is cussing her out like a straight up nigga, honey. Called her nigga and everything. Going in on her, telling her to shut the F up. Because she, she basically brought up the allegations that were alleged against him and Tiny um, early last year. And so she brought that up. And so he flipped out. So I want to go ahead and show you guys the video. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Because there was no fucking crime. 
it is nothing to charge me for. Or the other party, no, shut the fuck up for a second. Hey, listen, no, no, no. As many times as you jump on that shit, nigga, I'm gonna check your motherfucking ass as long as it takes. Nigga, when you stop talking about it, when you stop playing with me and mine, I'm gonna stop saying something. Nigga, ain't no motherfucking case, ain't never been no motherfucking case, cause I ain't did nothing wrong, and my wife ain't did nothing wrong. And if you keep on playing with me, nigga, I'm gonna motherfucking continue to confront you publicly, verbally. So you guys just saw that video. So of course, once that video went viral, the fake ass internet, you know, the same ones who scream protect black women. But like I told you guys time and time in my live stream, that term has been bastardized because the only black women that the internet wants to protect are their faves, meaning celebrities, black women who have status. You know, when, when Jada Pinkett supposedly got disrespected for her hair issues, always protect black women. Will Smith did the right thing and all this stuff. So y'all want to say T.I. was protecting his wife. You know what I'm saying? By what? Disrespecting another black woman? I find that very interesting. And it's one thing for him to go off, but he's cussing at her, you know, going in on her. But then he gets up on the stage and hugs her for what I feel was quite a long time. He had no business putting his hands on her. And I feel like when he was hugging her, he was saying something to her. I don't know what was being said, but it made me uncomfortable watching it because he was in her physical space. And then he snatched the microphone out of her hand. How was that okay? Why was he even allowed to be on stage? Where was security? Why did nobody jump up there and get T.I. off the stage? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Why was nobody protecting this black woman that was on stage doing her job? So he gets up there, he takes her microphone, he starts going off. And what's interesting is, I wonder if somebody jumped out the audience while he was performing at one of his shows imagine somebody jumped up out the audience jumped on stage and grabbed his microphone and said i can rap better than you and got the rap in i think ti would have his security stomp that person out but yet and still he showed her no type of respect and he did that so of course once that video went viral a lot of his fans went to her page and they were trolling her sending her death threats going off on her you know accusing her of starting all this mess accusing her of starting all this mess. So she got tired and she wanted to defend herself. So this is what she wrote. 
She says, listen, you can't be a heckler and get mad when you get a response. I stand on what I said. I love comedy. Make sure you get the whole story before you believe anything. Make sure you're at our bar ATL every Monday night, though. So then she goes on to explain that basically T.I. was heckling her and called her a bitch and was telling her to take off her wig and everything else. And that is why she responded. So like I always say, for every action, there's definitely a reaction. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So I'm going to explain this one time. This is about what happened at one night only at our bar on Edgewood with myself and T.I. T.I. came to the show. It's about over anyway. It's an open mic. He comes. He does like 30 minutes. Now, after he gets off stage, I'm going to the next shit. I'm hosting. I'm talking about marriage and shit. He keeps cutting me off, telling me to shut the fuck up, calling me all kind of bitches, heckling me. So I'm like, all right, come on, stop playing with me. Like, it's crazy. You keep going and I can't say nothing to you. He then starts yelling about how I need to take my wig off multiple times. Take your wig off right now. Cutting me off. Take your wig off right now. Because a lot of y'all are saying I took a cheap shot. This nigga was literally going on and on harassing me. I don't know why my eyes turn hazel. That shit is really ugly. But anyway, I said, I'll take my wig off when you speak on the allegations. Nobody was tight except for him. Nobody was trying to, nobody ever called him a rapist. I responded to him telling me in a room full of people to rip my wig off and made a joke just like he did. So if you got a problem with it, not mine. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So then T.I. came back. He went live and he basically accused her of lying and said that, you know, if he can find the video where he disrespected her and called her a bitch, he would give her a million dollars. You see where the shit got twisted? Never called you out your name. Never called you a bitch. You give me a video where I called you a bitch, I give you a million dollars. Where I call you a bitch at? Where did I call you a bitch? I never called you no bitch. So this is what she had to say. She says, see, it went from something simple that should have got squashed and settled to this man using his platform to lie on me to justify some bullshit. Everybody is tripping. I just want to do comedy at Trouble Man 31. Run me my million. We ended on a positive note. Now you lying and saying shit to weaponize your fan base that I'm not here for. I don't give a F how you feel. I'm here for the truth. I'm getting death threats and harassed because a nigga want to lie. That's lame as hell. This shit is aggy. And most importantly, I have no reason to lie. Oh, by the way. And then she writes her cash app and she says, hashtag, I'm serious. Hashtag mad dangerous. And she also managed to pull footage from the club. And if you see the club video, I'm going to show that to you. You can hear T.I. calling her a bitch. <laughs> Now, if now gossip in the city try to come in her comments and basically, I guess, you know, dick ride for T.I. I don't know what she was doing, but she says it doesn't sound like his voice. Nice voice over, though. The Internet can easily be tricked. It's sad. People started dragging gossip in the city because if you clearly watch the video as the word bitch is being said, he puts his head down trying to make it look like he's not saying it, but it's clearly coming out of his mouth. So I don't know why she's trying to say that it's a voiceover. It definitely sounds like T.I., but most importantly, watch his mannerisms. I'm going to play it again. <laughs> And you can even see the crowd's reaction. As soon as he says it and walks, the guy with the hat on and the girl with the braids, they start laughing and they're looking T.I.'s direction. So I'm not sure what video gossip in the city is watching, but that was T.I. That was T.I. He definitely said that. So once she bought the receipts. Oh, all of a sudden, honey, it was kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. All of a sudden, T.I. wanted peace. Honey, he woke up on a different side of the bed this morning. All of a sudden, he wrote a whole dissertation, you know, wanting to shout out Lauren and, you know, dead the, the air and everything else. So let me go ahead and read this to y'all. He went on to post a video of him and Lauren making up that day. So it's funny he posted that video. <laughs> I'm here to protect you. I'm here to protect you and correct you. You hear me? I'm here for your protection and correction. I'm not here to do anything harmful to you. I love you. I support you. 
Then he goes on to say this. I've said from my entrance into the world of comedy that I intend to use my light to shine on others to those who also have love and respect for the art form. In the spirit of that, everyone I'd like to introduce you to at She's Lauren K. She's a young up and coming comic on the scene in Atlanta. Check her out. She's a young black woman fighting to use her voice for laughter. And I understand that may take us down a dark road at times, but there's always an opportunity to find a beacon of light and produce a positive outcome. As I say all the time, all ships rise with the high tides. May she use whatever fame and notoriety she receives for good. I wish you the best and hope you bring the world more joy and laughter with the light you receive. I've done my part here. Moving on. Love and respect. King emoji. <laughs> Boy, if you don't. That's my response to this foolishness. This is a bunch of foolishness. If he really wanted to shout out this black woman, when that video went viral yesterday, T.I. had the power to stop the foolishness dead in its tracks. He could have said, this video is not mine. I didn't upload this. Lauren didn't upload this. We made up yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Everything's cool. It's water under a bridge. He could have shouted her out yesterday because they had made up in that video. He could have stopped all of this, but instead he fed into it. He allowed his fans to attack her and then even had the nerve to wage her and bet her a million dollars. And then when she bought receipts, cause I'm sure the club wants to split it with her. Cause that's how she got the video. Now all of a sudden it's all about peace and love. And I'm just here to shout her out and, and look out for another black comic. But you honestly could have looked out for her yesterday when this went viral and she was getting drugged and getting death threats. So this whole situation is a mess, but that's why I keep telling y'all do not believe the hype of the whole protect black women movement that movement is solely for black women whom the internet and whom social media deems acceptable deems palatable and deems worthy and most people don't fall in that category hence why everybody ran to attack her and send her death threats as opposed to what protecting all black women like they love to chant but yet and still they had no problem dragging this black woman who is basically defending herself from ti's heckling so my thing is, T.I., if you want to get into comedy, that's great. You know, get your feet wet. But you got to understand that as a comic, if you're going to dish it and be comedic, you also have to be able to take it. You know, and this is my thing. At this point, that's why I say comedy is not fun anymore. It's everybody's trying to get into it. Folks are going to these shows being super sensitive. It's not the same comedy that we grew up with. And I believe that comedy is slowly dying. Because some people are like, oh, you can't say this or how dare she bring up his, you know, the accusations and this, this and that. But if it's supposed to be comedic, I thought nothing was off limits. Now there's all these rules and regulations and you can't joke about this. You can't say that you're going to offend this group. You're going to offend that group. Well, then at that point, we shouldn't we shouldn't even have comedy at this point. And that's why I said in my last live stream that Will Smith really set a precedent because with everybody who was initially defending him and saying that, oh, he has a right to smack a comic and oh, well, he was protecting his wife. Well, you're going to get more of this where people, as soon as they feel offended, they feel upset. They're going to disrupt the show, snatch microphones, start attacking comedians, you know, and I believe that T.I. is just, you know, he's feeling that Will Pac energy. OK, same way Will Smith was feeling that Tupac energy and he turned into Will Pac. Now we have Tip Pac. You know, what I mean, he did the same thing to this woman. I mean, granted, he didn't slap her, thank goodness. But, you know, he really got up in her face and got up in her, you know, personal space where he shouldn't have been. You know, at the end of the day, that was her stage. Just like if somebody doesn't like, you know, T.I.'s lyrics, they can't then jump on stage to confront him about his lyrics, you know. So the whole situation was just a mess. But I definitely feel like Will Smith has definitely set a precedence. I see why a lot of comics, good comics, old school comics have literally retired from comedy because it's not funny anymore. When you have rappers pretending to be comics at that point, you know, the comedy game is going downhill. I'm just saying. So anyways, I'm glad it's water under a bridge. But, you know, I think Lauren wants her money, though, T.I. I'm just saying I think she wants her million dollars, but I don't want to put words in her mouth. OK, so anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you guys leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this whole situation. How do you feel about um, folks dragging Doja Cat's deadbeat dad, um, him coming out the woodwork? And then last but not least, how do you guys feel about all the drama that went down between T.I. and Lauren and basically T.I. trying to backtrack now because it looks like Lauren won the million dollar bet. I'm just saying. 
So let me know your thoughts on everything. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share the video, honey. And thank you guys so much for the support. I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. Deuces.